All right, Mr. Ken Johnson, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and then we've got the Blazer Group team. I know we've got Jason Evans. Yes? Yes, yes. he's on his way. Excellent, excellent. And also, uh, our, there he is, there he is. Who else along with you there, Jason? Uh, I got Kevin Westner. Kevin is our uh, trained expert, uh, 15 years of deep uh, product experience. So he's here to help us all understand everything we need to know. Well, before we, we, we know Blazer has got, and, and thank you for bringing Kevin into this because part of what we're trying to accomplish with this interactive session is the same thing we'd accomplish if we were at the gun fair. And we had such great plans for the gun fair this year um, to bring your whole team in, introduce, you know, the creme de la creme of what center fire rifles should be to our Minnesota audience, especially some of the new stuff you got coming out, um, and be able to shoot it. But in today's world, we're all making the best of this. And so in today's world, uh, we're gonna kind of uh, use and abuse technology to be able to have some fun that we would have, should have been and having a, uh, last weekend at the gun fair at Rice Creek. And so kind of what we end up doing in this session, and, and some of you that are attending here are veterans and you kind of know how it works. And some of you, uh, like some of us are first time. And so what happens is, uh, you'll find yourself as attendees on this in mute. And, and so at, maybe at the end, we'll release it if we have some time. We're going to run the session for about 30 minutes or so. So um, if, if, if we don't have time, we'll certainly follow up on your chats. But you're going to see a chat come across here on the bottom in a minute, um, welcoming you into the session. And please use that for asking questions back and forth. And that's something that we'll interject as, as the conversation's flowing. But, you know, kind of the, the gift of this uh, format is we can have, you know, expert product knowledge sitting at the factory like Kevin and Jason. We can have the field knowledge coming from a gentleman like Ken. And then we've got us behind the counter who are really, we're the face of the brand and we're, and we're the best advice. And so being able to pull that together in today's gun industry, and especially with a, a complex, well thought out product like the Blazer Group puts out, um, is kind of a, a cool concept that wouldn't happen otherwise. Also do know that as we're going through this, we will uh, take some of this, we'll get it on our YouTube channel. I'm sure we'll share it with, uh, with the Blazer Group team as well and be able to put some of it together. You know, I, I know Aaron wants to get into the product, but I know we want some history and, and know how this is all coming together and where things are going out there because everybody wants to know what's going on in the gun industry these days. You know, I mean, obviously supply chain is changing, so who, who your sources are and your model all, all kind of navigates this. And, and honestly, when somebody bellies up to the counter, we'd probably spend the first few minutes of that conversation about what's going on. And so I, I know we want to uh, introduce Kevin and Jason the right way and give you guys some time to do it, but I wouldn't be doing my job if we didn't say, hey, the only way deals get done at the gun fair is by sharpening our pencil, finding the, the, the best price and the best advice, putting it together, and especially a product like the Blazer Group puts out is important to that. So when the dust settles and when after you've thought about this and listen a little bit remember call us that's the best way to get the, the gun fair pricing you're not this is not to be anything that you're going to see online not going to be anything else out there just give us a call we'll talk through it there's a lot of nuance to product in fact i'm sure at the end of this we can connect even some of the factory guys on putting that advice together as we're building the right gun for you so just keep that in the back of your mind it, we'll, we'll we'll start navigating the conversation here i'm sure we're going to cover a lot of ground but at the end of the day give us a call at reeds Readsports.com is a way you can find our number and walk through things. And then we'll kind of kick things into gear that after that. We'll have an amazing package deals we're going to put together. There's a lot of moving parts when you're building these kind of guns that make it special. So um, without further ado, let's, let's get down to it. Um, Kevin, Jason, uh, you know, you're figureheads in the industry. You're, you're legends in your own right, and we're blessed to have you here. But tell us what's going on out there right now. I'm not sure. Hey, no, no laughing. I'm serious. We mean it. We, you know, when you get that much gray in your beard, Jace, there's something to it. You know, you got to have some fun with the good hair. So that's part of it, you know. Yep, so, so tell us what's here. going on with, with today's cycle right now, this year that we're in, where you see it going, and a little bit about how your line was crafted into that and where it's going to change. And, and really, then we'll get down into item by item, gun by gun. So uh, with that, uh, please introduce yourself. Take it away. Give us kind of where, where things are at, where they're going. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for that. Yeah, and appreciate the opportunity uh, from Reeds here. But uh, uh, my name is Jason Evans, uh, president of the Blazer Group USA. Uh, we cover Blazer, uh, Mauser, Sauer, uh, John Rigby, and Minox Optics. Uh, and what all those companies have in common is we are a premier hunting company. We, we supply uh, goods for the premier hunting uh, uh, you know, enthusiast, the traveling hunter, the, the person that is, uh, you know, wanting the best of the best. Um, 
you know, it's, it's primarily, it's all German, it's all German manufacturing, it's very German in the engineering, uh, and it's done to the world's highest standard. So what we have is a, is a different view from, say, the, the, uh, the, the standard gun manufacturer. So what we're looking at is people that are, you know, willing to travel, people that are willing to buy the best of the best. So whereas there are some upsides on, say, handguns and ammo and more of the social unrest concerns. Uh, what we are focusing on is educating people about the best products out there uh, to fulfill their hunting needs. Uh, so we're not, we're not seeing the big bump on the gun side uh, like most others are. What we're looking at is how do we educate, teach, inform, uh, you know, with the, with the lack of a lot of the hands-on experience, you know, this, this format is really helpful to us. So our point is to help show you why our product is the best. And that's what we're gonna go through today. Excellent, Excellent. thank you. Uh, Kevin, anything to add to that? Otherwise, we're gonna jump into guns and get down to it. Oh, let's, let's go. All right, all right. So Ken, uh, I know that you and Aaron have been working through some of the, the models that we had planned on having at the gun fair this year. Uh, you wanna introduce kind of what we're looking at and, and kind of walk through a little bit and, and I'll, I'll get out of the way. How's that? Oh, fair. Well, all, right. I think, all right. I think Kevin might have a little more information about what you actually received, but I will just say that uh, this product, having traveled as a hunter and gone to different countries and different continents to actually hunt, um, there's a lot of benefit to this model from the standpoint that customs, checking in, going through airports, et cetera. Um, these are fantastic products and the way that they're designed because you can do a multi-model product um, and you don't have to pay as many extortion fees, uh, especially if you're going to Africa. So I would say that uh, you could do a multi-barrel, multi-caliber system in one case that's basically the size of a violin. And this is what's amazing about it. And yeah, you know, and you're also talking about quarter MOA accuracy. So I'll let Kevin take it from there, but I'll just say that having been a traveling hunter, I'll say that this product is amazing. So. All right. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, Ken. Um, you know, uh, get, just tell you a little bit about Blazer. Um, well, we were started in 1957, so we're really not a new company. And really the R8 rifle that we're looking at today and the rifle that Reeds is going to be carrying is really the second generation of the straight pull bolt action rifle. The original version, the R93, is really the gun that put Blazer on the map because it was so innovative. It really redefined the parameters of a bolt action rifle because there's no uh, lifting the bolt handle, then drawing the bolt back, then closing the bolt handle and locking it back into place. Simply with the R8, all you do is grab a hold of the bolt handle and pull it straight rearward and then push it straight forward. And that is how you're going to cycle the rifle. So really, from a time management standpoint and getting the rifle loaded and reloaded for a second follow-up shot, if necessary, really, this is the fastest bolt action rifle that you can have on the market. Um, but a side byproduct of that, it is also the safest bolt action rifle you can have on the market. And that's a pretty big assertion to make. But what makes this rifle so uh, innovative and safe is uh, a lot of people talk about rifle safety. And once you get out in the field and you chamber around and you turn your safety on, your firing pin is compressed. Your firing pin spring is compressed, I should say. And that rifle is ready to fire at a moment's notice. So if you inadvertently bump that safety off and something gets in your trigger guard, your rifle can discharge. So that's an uncomforting fact for a lot of people. The thing that really makes the Blazer so unique is, is that it is a manual cocking system. The little lever on the back of the bolt, all you need to do is push that straight forward. As it goes forward, what it's really doing is compressing the firing pin spring and making the rifle ready to fire. So you can have a round in the chamber and the rifle is completely inert until you make it ready to fire. So from a safety standpoint, or if you're out with a pH, it is the most safe rifle you can have in the field. And the unique feature that that straight pull action is what really expands the whole uh, concept of what a bolt action rifle can be. 
because our bolt head locks directly to our barrel, that's how it can become, as Ken was saying, an interchangeable caliber system. The only tool you need to change calibers in this rifle is a simple five millimeter Allen wrench. There's two little captured bushings in the bottom of the forearm. You just loosen those bushings and the barrel will come right off the rifle. So changing calibers in the field is literally a minute, one minute job. You don't have to worry about losing any parts in the field. It is as user friendly as any rifle could be. Um, in, extremely intuitive and you know, safety is always job number one, accuracy is number two. But what we really try to convey to people, everybody has more than one rifle. I still have the very first hunting rifle I ever got as a kid, and I'll never get rid of it. Um, but the one unique thing about Blaser and what we try to educate people on is what's really going to make you a more comfortable and a more confident hunter and shooter is the fact that you're consistently mounting the rifle exactly the same way every time. Because regardless of what barrel you have on the rifle, two intangibles don't change. It's never going to change the stock dimension or the trigger pull. Our triggers are incredibly precise. They're 900 grams. That's just shy of two pounds. So it's incredibly crisp. It, there's no take up to the trigger. When you get on the trigger, it, it's just like a rock growing through a piece of glass. It just simply breaks. Um, it's an incredible system. And that we really feel is going to give you the confidence because the rifle, your connection to the rifle will never change regardless of what you're shooting through the rifle that day pretty long-winded well no, that was that was an excellent explanation uh, there are a lot of features on these r8s uh, that, that have always amazed me and one I mean my experience mostly with the Blauser series in here I mean guys coming in with with pre-existing rifles looking for my advice on glass um, and one thing that blows my mind is your saddle mount I have never seen an easier mounting system I have never seen a more precise mounting system uh, than that. There are some huge benefits to that coming on and off and the precision. How did you guys, how did your engineers come about this? Give us a little 411 on how the saddle mount came to be. Okay. Realistically, the saddle scope mount is the only common accessory that is still with this product line from the original version, the R93. That scope mount was perfected in that platform and it, since nine, and really the way we name our products is what year we introduced it to the marketplace. So the R93 originally came to the marketplace in 1993. The R8, the second iteration of the rifle, came to the marketplace in 2008. So the one common accessory, the one intangible, was that scope mounting system. They have refined that scope mounting system to perfection. It really is truly and this is a pretty big assertion but we have had it tested by everybody in on the planet when you zero that scope to that particular barrel you can remove that scope and put it back on as many times as you like and we guarantee you you are not going to have to re-zero that scope to that barrel as long as you didn't change anything as long as you didn't drop your scope or cause some other kind of damage your point of impact will not change with that scope uh, and we're really proud of it. And it's, um, it's, it's one of those things that really um, Germans sitting around with too much time on their hands is a dangerous thing. The scope mount though is really a bulletproof design, um, very unique to our product. Um, and it is absolutely um, heart and soul of what really makes this product so flexible because you can, take the scope off of the rifle and never worry about it. As Ken was saying, when you're traveling, um, if you have your rifle secured in one place, you can keep your optics with you in another place. Optics seem to be the one thing that everybody likes to steal now. Um, so this way is a, a, a guaranteed way of safeguarding your optics and still getting to uh, wherever your hunt is and having the, you know, without having to go through all of the uh, pains of shooting that rifle multiple times to get the rifle back on paper. Absolutely, um, I know a lot of guys who travel. They always keep they always keep this with the carry on, and they don't have to worry about it when they get there. Right. Between, well, like you definitely said, the between theft and the hard handling that a gun goes through when it gets put on a plane, it's amazing 
that you could put that right back on when you get there and it's it's guaranteed um i've seen yeah, it PSA and baggage handlers that's yeah that that really and the real advantage is as you said you can protect your optics um and really it's a robust rifle um i don't think you're ever going to have to worry about something like that um, and we've seen everything. I mean, we've had people drop them out of helicopters. We've had people drop them out of tree stands. We've had people shove them through the hood of a Chevy Suburban already. So I think, um, you know, really uh, it's torture tested. It's been used on every continent on earth, hunting something. Um, so really it's a well-traveled rifle. Agreed. Well, that's one thing I definitely love about these things. There is uh, another pretty slick operation of this rifle that really gets gets me charged up and how slick that trigger group comes in and out and i believe there's an additional round carrier in the boxes at least you guys sent me um you want to talk about the design of that why it's there yeah and actually that's a it's a great point because that was really what separates this rifle from the r93 that removable fire control system is really light years ahead of where rifles are because what you do when you remove, you grab those two little tabs on the bottom of your rifle and remove that fire control system, you really don't think of the functionality that that one feature has, but it has multiple functions. First of all, when you remove the fire control system, the rifle is a great club, but there's no way you can make it fire without that fire control unit. So safety around the home, you can keep the trigger mechanism separate from the rifle, um, and that gives you one further step of added security. Um, next thing, if you think about it in a hunting application, you can have a second trigger mechanism and have it as one is going to have your solids in it and one is going to have your soft point bullets in it. So if you need to change ammunition for, uh, you know, getting a better uh, trophy or a better shot placement, this gives you the opportunity to remove the, all the source of the ammunition from the rifle in one single unit. And a lot of people say, well, geez, you know, I'm going to go on an elk hunt and I'm going to carry that rifle in on a horse scabbard, that bouncing around. What if something hit those two fingers and I lost my trigger mechanisms? Well, Germans being Germans, they thought about that as well. They've also, if you look inside of that trigger housing, there's a little switch that you see. Once you flick that switch while it's inside the rifle, it will now lock that removable trigger mechanism inside the rifle. So it would then be non-removable. So they've looked at every kind of what if scenario, what can happen to a hunter in the field? Because when Murphy's not hunting in the United States, he's in Germany. So they really wanna make a bulletproof, something to enjoy, uh, to make your hunting experience more enjoyable. Fantastic, uh, great explanation, thank you. Uh, looking through it, I know I don't know how or when you wanna get into this, but we do have to get into it. Uh, the guy jumping from a 243 to a 375 H&H is clearly going to need a bolt head change. Uh, yes. They change pretty simply. Do you have one there that you could zip through? I do. I do. My fingers will never leave my hand in this demonstration. So what you have is the bolt housing itself. And so really the only thing you need to do there is a little bar that goes through the center of the bolt housing. All you need is just to take your fingernail and stick it in that little latch and you're going to, you'll feel it's spring loaded. You're just going to open it like you'd be opening a gate. So at that point, all you'll do is give the bolt head a quarter of a turn and the bolt head will come completely out of the housing. Now, the firing pin and firing pin spring are actually captured. Again, Blouser does not want you to lose anything in the field, so nothing can fall out. Okay, so we were taking off, you said a 243, so we're taking out our standard bolt head and we're grabbing our magnum bolt head. And that magnum bolt head, um, really for the United States market, there are three bolt heads. There's a mini bolt head for your 222s, your 223s, and your 204 Rugers. There's a standard bolt head that is from 22250 all the way up to 9362, and a magnum bolt head. Basically, if you have magnum attached to it, it is our magnum bolt head. So, now we'll take the bolt head and we'll essentially just drop it over the firing pin and firing pin spring. And then as we lock it into place, we're gonna give it a little quarter of a turn and now it locks into place. I don't know how well you can see this on the camera. There's still actually a little bit of movement inside the bolt head. 
uh, all you do is now push the bolt head down slightly and that little bar will lock into place. Now, I purposely did not lock the bolt head locking bar in place correctly because you won't be able to see it on your camera, but you would be able to feel it here outside of the rifle. So that is a safety feature telling you that you have not locked your bolt head into place correctly and it would prevent you from reassembling the rifle. So right now that little stainless steel check pin would not allow you to put the bolt back into the rifle. So once I wiggle that little locking bar, it's locked into place correctly and that little stainless steel check pin is now gone. That would allow you to insert the bolt head back into the rifle. About as simple as it gets. It really is. And we do have several videos about changing the bolt head in really slow motion detail on YouTube. But I know you guys are going to put it out there also. So I'm sure uh, with all of that good information out there, you'll be able to uh, um, get it, get the word out there. But, you know, we still get calls every day. I mean, I've gotten calls on vacation from uh, fairly well-known people that say, I can't remember how to change my bolt head. Uh, you know, walk me through it. I and mean, I'm driving down the highway in Florida explaining it to them on vacation. But, you know, that's part of the job. We're, we're here to help you, you know, basically 24-7. So. Got it. So basic functions of the rifle. I mean, outside of that, I don't think we're missing too many things. But no, really? That, see, that's the thing. And I heard you say it a little earlier in the presentation is there are a lot of pieces and parts. Um, but there really aren't when you think about it because it is a very simple design. It really boils down to a barrel, a magazine insert, and basically a stock and receiver. Um, and everything is clearly marked on the side of every barrel. When you open the ejection port, when you open that bolt housing, on the side of every barrel is going to be the caliber group marking. And that bolt head, will will also have exactly the same marks on it. So for a mini, that 222, 223, it will be MI. For the standard caliber group, it will be ST for standard. And for the Magnum caliber group, it will be MA. So every bolt head will be marked and every barrel will be marked. So you'll always know you're using the crap parts together. So again, they tried to really make it so you could not get yourself in a situation where you would spoil a hunt um, because you had the wrong mix of parts in the gun. So again, it's incredibly intuitive uh, and it really tries to kind of walk you through the entire hunting process. Kevin, would you walk through um, some different variations of calibers and the way they would be used, like some, from your experience with customers that would take them to say Africa? So we uh, we want to. Yeah. We want a magnum and then we want something for a uh, small game or diminutive game would you would you mind talking about that for a little bit sure absolutely yeah. um you know we've you know ever since you know blouser has been around we have always supported safari club international so i've been to uh, i don't know 100 safari clubs between dallas safari club sci national and there always seems to be kind of recurring themes and packages that we have built um, to make it, again, that kind of user-friendly experience where you'll have a 375 H&H for your Buffalo gun and then your 300 Winchester Magnum for your Plains game gun. Sure. The nice thing about it, as we said, changing calibers is literally a one-minute job um, and really it's very intuitive again. So the flexibility in changing those two calibers, you'd only change your barrel and your magazine insert. Um, and what we're seeing, a lot of people taking this rifle to Africa um, really love that combination. Now we've seen a change in the recent years for people that are going to get the, the big brown bears in Alaska. It was always kind of a 300 Winchester Magnum gun or a 375. Lately, we've seen a lot of people taking 416 Remington Magnums um, on big brown bear hunts to Alaska. So incredibly uh, flexible. Again, the same rifle that will hold a 375 H&H or a 416 Remington Magnum, you can turn around and put your 22 long rifle barrel on it and take your, your kids out to the range and, and let them you know, experience the wonder, which is the outdoors and get them away from your telephone because the rifle is that flexible. The only thing you would change when you're going to a 22 conversion kit is uh, 
the 22 bolt head, which really changes a center fire to a rim fire, the magazine insert again, and a barrel. Again, it is literally a one minute change operation to do any of these. Um, and it really only requires one tool, a five millimeter Allen wrench. If you lose the Allen wrench that we provide with the, the rifle, you can go to any Home Depot on the planet, uh, any hardware store in Canada, Alaska, Mexico, anywhere you might be traveling and get a five millimeter Allen wrench. They tried to really pick something that was so common, you could find it anywhere in the world. Um, and then when you get back, give us a call and we'll throw another one in an envelope and send it to you. Uh, great prairie dog gun too. We offer a variety of different barrel tapers in this platform. We have standard taper barrels, semi-weight barrel tapers, and match barrel tapers. And I will tell you, as Ken was saying earlier, we're, we're incredibly known for accuracy. And I, I've been in the Dakotas shooting lots and lots of prairie dogs, uh, and the rifle performs flawlessly. It really is an incredible system. Fantastic. And I noticed uh, in the R8 series, there's not just one to choose from, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want to run down a few of your favorite models or as many as you think we can get through in a half Sure, hour. yeah. I'll, I'll talk about two real, well, the two things that really are notable for our company is, is really the rifle that you see here. This is the rifle that is kind of our original, what we call the, uh, well, the R8 Professional. And this is what we call our standard stock. It is completely neutral. There's no cast to the gun and the stock is completely straight. So the really nice thing about this is um, you are right-handed and your son is left-handed or your daughter is left-handed. You can buy one rifle complete and an extra left-handed bolt. And then all you really need to do to change the bolt is just press the bolt release button, slide out your right-handed bolt and put your left-handed bolt in. The gun will not care what bolt is in it and it will function flawlessly. So really the RA Professional is, is a great professional hunter gun because you never know what's gonna to happen to a customer's gun when he comes to travel to your location. Sure. So it's a great neutral platform that anyone can use, right or left-handed. Then we really kind of had the game changer when we came out with what we call the professional success style stock. And that was the first version of the rifle. And what they really shot for there was making the rifle as ergonomically perfect as they could for comfort of the shooter. So when you get on the rifle and you have to stand, you know, stay on your scope, waiting for an animal to quarter or turn to get you a better shot, your wrist is at a more comfortable natural angle and allows you the time and patience for a well-placed shot versus a hurried or a rush shot incredible shooting from a tree stand. You can stay on the gun for 20 minutes or 30 minutes without any shooter fatigue. Shooter fatigue is what's really gonna cause you to rush that shot. You're going, well, I'm tired of waiting. I'm gonna take a shot and at least get them moving. Um, none of those attributes are things that really you'll have to even deal with this in the rifle because they really wanted to go for something that would give you the most relaxed position of the wrist, forearm, and shooting arm. Um, so it's really uh, an incredible platform. Again, versatile and flexible. Um, the interchangeable caliber system it, it is really um, something unique to our company. And then the latest version of the rifle we have here is what we call the RA Ultimate Rifle. And we kind of taken that, that success style stock to the next level. That has a built-in adjustable comb system that allows you to change your uh, adjustable comb settings without the use of any tools in the field and still allow you to disassemble the rifle without any tools in the field. It is, again, completely modular um, and very intuitive. Gotcha. All right, I know I have, uh, well, I'm gonna have to, I have to pull this off the rack for those that you, you can see. Uh, when you guys do wood stocks, you don't you don't mess around. No, we don't. Yeah, you know, 300 year old Turkish walnut trees are getting so hard to find. Uh, the owner of our company really uh, he really wanted to control the source. So from buying from a company in Bulgaria, 
that uh, Turkish walnut for years and years and years. He just decided to buy the company so he could really um, bring only the best wood to the marketplace. And we have some extraordinary wood. And, uh, you know, honestly, I will say we're probably the fairest wood graders that I've ever seen because I've seen people really say, oh, well, this is a grade nine or grade 10 piece of wood. And you look at it, you go, no, nah, not so much. But I think that the Germans really are quite honest and they always say, hey, this is a, a wood grade three, a wood grade four, five, six. And we really here for the U.S. market, we start at wood grade three and we stop at wood grade 11. And if you can't find something spectacular somewhere in that, you're really trying to find a reason not to buy a rifle. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, um, there are a number of custom shop options that we can set up for customers. Yeah, they're, they're really, um, you know, Blazer is in the dream business. Our, our thought process is always, um, we're here to make you happy and it's just a question of budget. We can really do anything. If you want your wife engraved on the receiver of your gun, That's which all. we have done before. Horrible idea. <laughs> we, can, we can certainly do that. Um, you know, your best hunting dog, we have done that. We have done tractors. We've done John Deere tractors. Believe it or not, that gun's in Minnesota, and I sold that gun to a customer. Um, so really, if you can dream it up, we're in the dream business. We're here to be the sales department, not the sales prevention department. We are going to find a way to make your dreams become reality. That's fantastic. So that's a simple call to myself, Ken Johnson. We can get lined up with you. Yeah, on. absolutely. Ken, yeah. Ken's yeah. well versed in the product, or you can call me in the office. Um, you know, uh, you know, Ken and I work together. Um, you know, on things that aren't in our normal product catalog. Um, if you give us a couple of days, we'll have an answer back from Germany, and we'll give you an exact price and a rough estimate of delivery time. And the really great thing about our company is. We can give you a full-blown custom rifle with your wife and your dog and everybody in the family on there in half the time that you would get from any other custom rifle manufacturer. Because Blazer really is constantly booking time with the best engravers in Europe, and we always have a spot in line somewhere where we can plug your order. Um, so realistically, there's no, you'll never call us and you'll never get, well, call us in three years and we'll have your rifle ready for you. You'll okay. never get that answer from our company. It, it really is a very special opportunity for the customer that wants something that nobody else has. It, there'll be one of a kind rifle. And that's hard to find these days. You know, everybody's got this truck or that car or whatever, but th these are very unique products. And I'll also say that they have a very good um, uh, rifle builder uh, system on their website. So you can go in and pick your options and build it up and then email it to yourself and then send it to the dealer so that you have basically all your specs laid out and we can quote it for you. So that's a, that's a really nice utility, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, the gun, the rifle builder on our website is, is fantastic. It tells you, yes, you can absolutely do that, or it'll preclude you. There are some options that it says, you know, no, you can't do that. Um, you know, it really is a, a very intuitive tool that really will help you, again, in that whole, um, that whole process. And it's basically a pull-down menu, so you can sit there and change the rifle back and forth. I mean, it is really, uh, it's a lot of fun to, to build a rifle. Hey guys, I got to jump in real quick. I apologize. I just want to say uh, good night to Sam. Sam's one of our attendees. He's just want to say thanks for putting on a great show. He's got to jump off. So uh, Kevin, uh, Ken, our compliments from Sam. Just want to pass thanks, along. Hey, great, thanks, great. Sam. Hey, uh, real quick, it's just about timing and customization. And this is more the probably the gun geek in me than anything else. But what percentage of orders in general, so you can pick all your guns that are coming out through the R8 series, for example, are custom in some way, shape, or form that have those extra embellishments these days? Uh, you know, honestly, I would say 40%. Um, people really, uh, you know, everybody wants uh, a very popular wood version. So let's use that as the example. A very popular wood version is the rifle called the Jaeger. And it's really a very um, just black receiver. But what people will do is they'll say, hey, I want a black receiver. And instead of the factory wood grade three, I want to go to a wood grade seven. 
because then your wood then becomes the spectacular talking point of your Blazer rifle. Um, and that there are no two rifles that are going to have that, you know, wood grade seven. Engraving can be duplicated by anybody. And sometimes it, you know, themes of guns get overused. If I see another shotgun with, uh, you know, mallards and pheasants on it, it's just, um, again, overused or a white tailed deer. Um, it doesn't mean we won't do that. It just means that we give you other options and we try to keep a really a reasonable running supply of wood here in the United States. And then you'll say, hey, I want a red, uh, red stag pistol grip cap or a white tailed deer pistol grip cap on it. Those kind of custom features we are capable of doing right here in the United States. Your rifle is built. We bring everything in components to the United States and we do 100% of the kidding function and our offices here in San Antonio. That's, you know, and I'm not surprised you say 40%, Kevin, because we see more and more people reaching for your sure. quality of gun as an heirloom. You know, and that is exactly, it makes a ton of sense uh, hearing that percentage up as high, to, as high as it is. You know, I thought it'd be maybe that 30-ish, but that's not surprising to be 40%. And actually, this kind of goes into the next piece of this is, you know, as far as building out and you have your rifle builder on your site, I mean, are you seeing a lot of people work through that rifle builder and then because of the quality of the fire you're talking about, then pick up the phone, maybe have it printed out or, 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 or ready to go uh, online and then talk you through it or talk to us about it? Is that probably the best way to kind we of do. support too? We really do. I have, a, you know, honestly, I'm here every day at 6.15 and I leave at five o'clock uh, and the phone starts ringing at eight o'clock. And we have people that get talked through um, their custom builds. And, you know, a lot of times there, it's just like going to the counter guy. You're kind of looking for that buddy blessing um, because he might know a weird fact about the gun that would make it more useful or more versatile uh, for you. So we talk through people's builds 85% of the time and really help them refine it. Um, especially when you're going from like the really big caliber guns to something smaller caliber for like when you're not traveling or you're not going to the Dakota's uh, prairie dog hunting. We tell you through those um, a, additional barrel options, the semi-weight barrels or the match barrels or the heavy safari barrels, we tell you the best way to make your rifle functional. And then when you go to a smaller caliber, ways to uh, not make your white, you know, all of a sudden if you have a large match barrel on your rifle and then you take that match barrel off and you put a small 17 millimeter barrel on there all of a sudden it looks like you have uh, you know a place to plant a garden on each side of your barrel we tell you ways uh, how to avoid that and still make your custom rifle look like a custom rifle without yeah. having uh, any uh, oddness or a, a, an unusual look I guess is the best way to say that or something that looks like it's or um, ill-fitting parts exactly that. And that's, you know, really one thing that you'll never find in this platform is that um, it's always going to go together and it's going to look perfect. So on that customization route with the dialogue and everything else, so let's, you know, obviously we have, we have guns here at Reed's, you have guns that are already ready to roll uh, at the factory level. But when, once we go through that process of, you know, the rifle builder, the conversation, we're like, okay, let's, let's do this. What's a, what's a range that you guys feel like you're booking? I know you mentioned half of what it typically would be for this quality firearm out there, but what's that, what's that in hand window look like? Because so often this time of year, and this is part of why the gun fair came to be is we're starting to get ahead of the season. And I think one question that a lot of people will be asking following this is do I have time still for this fall or am I looking further out or do I need to look further out as we're starting these conversations after this? Well, uh, here at our U.S. operation, we are 100% importation. Um, we do no domestic manufacture, so everything is going to be made in Germany. So that being said, don't fear because we keep a $10 million running inventory here in this building. So realistically, if you're uh, ebb and flow of inventory, uh, if you called and said, hey, I want a, a, a fluted 300 Winchester Magnum barrel in a pro success stock, brown in color with brown leather inserts, that rifle would be shipped to you usually within a week. I mean, we keep a lot of our most common best-selling items 
in inventory or always on its way from Germany. I get two shipments a month. Every 15 days, I will get a shipment from Germany. So if I don't have it today, it usually is in the build process and I will have it. My worst case scenario um, on a running product would be 90 days. Wow, that's fantastic. I mean, that's nothing what I would guess. Nope, I would guess much longer. That's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Hey, well, Kevin, one request I have that I think would be a good, um, bef before, we, I know we're having to wrap because I think we're going long, right? A little bit. So, Kevin, could you show us a, do you have an R8 in a travel case? Because I think that's a great travel case itself. Uh, there is a travel case on that cart. I did have, I did put one together out of a case. Okay. Yeah, we did send it uh, in a case. So, uh, we don't have one here that I would be able to show you from okay. our view. All right. Well, that's okay. Um, just and we do. I, I mean, honestly, we have two different styles of cases. Um, a standard case is a Model B case, and that's one rifle complete with optics. And go. then we have what's called a Model C case, and that's one rifle complete with optics and an additional barrel and optics. And kind of the target there is for the traveling hunter. You're going to Africa, you're going to have your 375, your 416 barrel, and your 300 wind barrel, or your 30 odd six barrel. It gives you the flexibility of having those um, both in one place at one time. Yeah. I just, uh, if you'll hold that up again, Aaron, I just want to like remind everyone if you've ever had to walk through the airport with a huge SKB, oh, yeah, with a 375 in it, um, this, would, like, yeah. this would We're be a Gilbert. And pick out the guy with the gun in the airport. Yeah, that's that's a that's an easy game to play. It's basically like you're carrying a violin. It's it's the way to go. Yeah. Absolutely. It can break down. It can fit inside a duffel bag. Um, you know, Blazer does have what we call the Blazer trolley, where the gun case is really designed to fit in a compartment in the bottom of the case. So after it's inspected by TSA, they throw their little card in there. You lock it back up. You just throw it uh, in that travel trolley. And when you get there, you'll look like uh, you're just coming for a vacation. That's all. That's right. Perfect. We well, think of everything. Good call out, Ken. Good call out. Thank you. Hey, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, you know, wealth of knowledge and just, I think, understand, we covered a lot of ground um, and we will make sure this gets uploaded to YouTube and we can share on it some more. And I think this, you know, we're scratching the surface clearly just with our discussion today. But I tell yeah. you what, uh, Ken, uh, Jason, Kevin, Thank you so much. And, you know, again, this is a little bit of the, little bit of the consummation of the deal. If we start talking about things now, I mean, what you're saying, Kevin, is, you know, it can happen as fast as a week, but on the long side, there's still time this, you know, by this fall to be actually shooting Absolutely. that money and planning the you hunt. You will be shooting the best rifle on the planet. Accuracy, safety, flexibility, interchangeability. No one can, no other product can really match this platform. This is really components at its best. And, and on top of that, the one thing we'll say is being able to work with everybody and, and, you know, and, and designing it from the factory all the way through the process. The one thing that we'll make sure that Reeds does our job on it in the spirit of sharing the Zoom uh, session with us is we'll make sure we take care of it in, in, in the price side of saying thanks for making the time to start this. This is totally outside our box. Clearly, uh, you know, we all we have been shaking hands and having fun and shooting guns and, and learning and touching and feeling it. But right now, this is close to what we're going to get. But what we greatly appreciate the time that you know, everybody's carved out of their schedule to be able to go through this. And this is amazing to be able to interact this way. But I think at the end of the day, we might find people shooting guns they never would have thought of or touched or designed the way we are just because of some of the slowdown in technology may make us have the time to go through it. So. You guys are fantastic. Any other any other thoughts there, Kevin or Ken? You like touch base? Well, the one last thing I would interject, and kind of the thing that touches everybody, um, all Blazer products have a ten year manufacturer warranty. Wash the tire marks off it and send it back to us. We'll find a way to either repair or replace it. Um, Blazer has probably the most intuitive warranty on a gun I've ever seen. Um, if the rifle doesn't shoot, which I've only seen two or three barrels legitimately in my 15 years here that didn't shoot um really uh, you know that cold hammer forging of the barrel it, it really matters uh that 10-year manufacturer warranty nothing's going to happen the first seven or eight years you on the rifle but year number 10 or even past that if you send it in to us our gunsmiths here in san antonio will evaluate it and they are not guys that are looking at this as a profit center 
they are going to back the customer as much as humanly possible. So realize we're on your side, we're here to help you sell, and we're here to give you the best rifle on the planet, so. Well, and I think at the end of the day, we all probably want to be a Blazer guy. You know, and, uh, and well, we do, you know. And so, uh, hey, Ken, do you have any other thoughts you want to share here? I just have one other thing we got to cover real quick. No, I'll just say that um, I've, I've talked to um, PHs in South Africa this week. I've talked to uh, elk guides in Wyoming. I've talked to uh, duck hunting guides in Western Minnesota. I've talked to a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of interest in booking right now, um, but also – especially for the, for the traveling hunter, the person we're addressing today, is that um, the animals are getting bigger. And, you know, uh, they're getting a rest, just like LA has good air right now. Um, you know, there's, the animals are just getting bigger. So guys, you know, think about the future, get out there, let's, let's go hunting again. Let's, it's time to do it. Right now, well, and, and I'll get our kids out there. Get our kids out there and get them trained the right way with something that's not as punishing as a 300 Winchester Magnum. Get them out there with a 22 long rifle and teach them real fundamentals. Put the phone down, put the Xbox down, and go outside. And start enjoying the outside again. Right on, love it. And, and Ken, I will throw the bus on this because you do have a wealth of knowledge on that traveling hunter and places to go and things things to do. And I think the combination of that with the the topic and the subject matter of blouser rifles is kind of a natural fit for you. So we will hook you up if somebody's, uh, you know, when you call into Reeds and say, hey, I want to be a blouser guy or I watch the blouser uh, Zoom session, we'll make sure we hook everybody up. But do give us yeah. a call. We'll make sure we take, we say thank you for taking the time to go through this. And uh, we'll take care of just say, when you call in, just say, hey, I want to be a blouser guy. We'll figure it out from there. We'll know exactly what to do. That's right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, make it, we'll make it yours. It's going to be your rifle. I like absolutely. it. Thank you. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank Fantastic job, guys. Thanks, everybody. Take Thanks, care. Kevin. Thanks, Jason.